Maps are really a weapon of war. If they're accurate, um, they greatly add to your arsenal. So if you're in a position where you can't view the enemy, all you can rely on is that map. That's your only pair of eyes. One of the first skills that we teach Canadian soldiers is how to read a map. Soldiers today know how to read and write. In World War I, it was a slightly different demographic. Many men had not gone through as much schooling, but still they would have been taught. This is a road, this is a river, this is north, uh, these are the grid lines, this is how you take a, a grid location. So as much as a soldier needs to know how to fire his rifle, even in World War I, he had to know how to read a map. Each one of these maps were created for a different purpose at a different date for a different branch of the military during World War I. You name the purpose, they developed the map for it. Everything the soldier needs, he has either carried up or somebody has brought forward to him. The lumber, the wire, the sheet metal, the barbed wire, the machine gun, the ammunition, the food, the water. Somebody had to lug that stuff forward. And it required maps so that people would know where to move things towards and distribute the supply depots close enough to be useful behind the lines. Trench maps not only directed soldiers to where things went, but also showed them where they had to be within a trench's intricate labyrinth. Trench maps are, are marvelous cartographic masterpieces. Every little jog, every little jigsaw, every little corner is a real place. And they're not approximations, they're actual locations on the ground. So like a street map, the trench maps help the Allied soldiers know how to move around and as well for the enemy positions, so they would understand where the more vulnerable portions of the enemy's lines were. This is a perfect example of a trench map. You can see all the German trenches listed here in red, the front firing trenches with this crenellated pattern, the communication trenches running back and forth between the other rows of trenches, a lot of attention given to the location of machine guns, trench mortars, signal stations, and so forth, all appearing on the map. Knowing exactly where your enemy is could mean the difference between victory and defeat. This is what's known as a message map. These were issued to officers going into attack so that they could communicate their situation very rapidly back to headquarters behind the lines for evaluation. This is a World War I soldier's equivalent of a modern day smartphone. First of all, you've got the small portable size. You've got your map information, like calling up Google on your, your phone, based on aerial photography, like our modern maps are based on satellite imagery. And then when it comes time, you can send your text message. We've got a printed form on the back here, and they can say what their situation is. They can say whether they're being held up by an enemy machine gun or by wire. They can request extra ammunition, water, hand grenades. These little guys only appeared in the last half of the war when the printing process became very streamlined. We're standing in the warehouse of the Canadian Forces Map Depot. We've got maps from anywhere Canada is likely to be. No airplane flies, no ship sails, no boots on the ground without either a map or data that we provide. You can put a bullet through a computer and it's dead. You put a bullet through a piece of paper, you just got a little hole. Every soldier wants to have a paper map in his pocket as his fallback. As much as it's an information age, we work on paper.